the land of the rising sun. So many pictures come to mind while saying that. It very often feels like I could never fully understand a civilization so different than mine. But every once in a while, a book comes along to help us take a few more steps towards our goal. This time, it was the best-selling novel of James Clavell, Shogun. A detailed story of power and honor in feudal Japan, seen through the eyes of the English sailor John Blackthorne, while learning to navigate the cultural codes of a sophisticated and foreign society. One of the most powerful men in Japan in the spring of the year 1600, Lord Yoshi Toranaga finds himself face to face with a potential pirate, an English sailor and enemy of the Catholic priests already on the island. While everything was pointing towards exterminating the foreign menace, Toranaga chooses to learn more about Europe from a different source. It is the first clue the book gives us about the personality of this central character. And he does not disappoint. A true mastermind with an intricate view of power, of honor and duty, he is a never-ending lesson in philosophy. I suspect James Clavell was very amused by this particular construction, as he constantly confuses us with regards to Toranaga's intentions. Up until the end, it is quite difficult to understand if he is a genius or a diabolic tyrant. Not an easy to love, but a memorable character. Number 1. A Western View of the Far East When reading historical fiction, the point of view is the most important thing for me. And while Japan has a strong and thankfully well-translated literary culture, for a European it is sometimes important to have things explained by a similarly constructed mind. To have an English main character Presenting such an extraordinarily different culture from his has helped me to identify with him and maybe to immerse myself a little deeper into the story. Number 2. A study of feminine status. I'm writing this in the spring of 2021 and in my little universe as well as in the wide world out there, women have fought and obtained many rights we never could have dreamed of. And still, there is so much more to do. We struggle to find the best way of continuing the fight without losing the feminine values unique to us, thinking they are our weaknesses. In the Shogun, I have discovered a culture that allows women to be samurais and still keep their power of seduction. Mariko is a paradox of a woman. Perhaps the most valued counsel to Lord Toranaga. A fierce warrior that makes hard decisions and acts in cold blood. And a goddess in the eyes of the one falling in love with her. 
for the early 17th century, I find this absolutely astounding and can only wish more feminist organizations would open themselves to the philosophy of Mariko. Number three, the value of humility. We learn in school about colonialism, about the Christian missionaries all over the world, and the idea they had that whoever might be out there in the wild was certainly less evolved than they were, hence the point of spreading the knowledge. James Clavell chose to create a protagonist willing to understand the world he stumbled into. And great miracle, he becomes aware of the many superior standards of living he finds. While the whole of Europe was living with lies, he discovers the daily bath rituals of Japan. Accustomed to eating meat until his belly bursts, he learns to thrive on little fish and rice, some broth and tea. For some of these habits, it is clearly a question of better living, while for others, it is merely a different lifestyle. The key of his power to adapt is letting go of the superiority complex that Europeans had at the time. Humility was the key to an eye-opening experience. When you get to the end of the 1,140 pages, you leave the illusion of being an expert in samurai philosophy, Japanese feudal society, and the power wars between the greatest lords of the country. That, for me, is a very young novel. Karma is the beginning of knowledge. Next is patience. Patience is very important. The strong are the patient ones, Anjin san. Patience means holding back your inclination to the seven emotions hate, adoration, joy, anxiety, anger, grief, and fear. If you don't give way to the seven, you're patient. Then you'll soon understand all manner of things and be in harmony with eternity. And since this is such a massive novel, I hope you will allow me a second favorite quote. First, she studied her husband's flower arrangement. He had chosen the blossom of a single white wild rose and put a single pearl of water on the green leaf and set it on red stones. Autumn is coming, he was suggesting with the flower. Talking through the flower, do not weep for the time of fall the time of dying when the earth begins to sleep. Enjoy the time of beginning again and experience the glorious cool of the autumn air on this summer evening. Soon the tear will vanish and the rose, only the stones will remain. Soon you and I will vanish and only the stones will remain.
If you are not an expert of Japanese culture and history, this book will open the gates to a fascinating world. If you are one of our Japanese friends or simply a Japan savvy, you will love the well written novel that shows your dear Nippon culture all the respect it deserves. There are books that make such a strong impression on us, we feel nothing we could say will make them justice. Shogun is one of those novels for me. With its vast storyline, very well drawn characters, and an intrigue worth saving from spoilers, I feel I could never express the place it has in my reading world. So I will end by saying just this read it and get back to me. Until then, enjoy your reading.